Okay, welcome to the video guys. Uh, my name is Pushpinder Gill and uh, today we are going to do binomial theorem. So this is going to be a pretty basic video on binomial theorem that will uh, just introduce the concept to you, right? Later on we're going to make things more complex for you. Uh, so this would be the email address to send your valuable feedback on and uh, this would be the Facebook page to give us your valuable like and this would be the web address to explore more about us which is perfect-scores.com. So let's go ahead and get started over here. So you must have seen these identities a lot in your school. Let, let's say a plus b whole square uh, is equal to a square plus 2ab plus b square right or if I let's suppose talk from a plus b raised to power 1 that is equal to a plus b if I talk about a plus b raised to the power 3 that is going to be a raised to power 3 plus uh, 3a square b plus 3b a b square plus b raised to power 3 right so this is how the identities are there but if I ask you can you tell me what is a raised to power b whole to the power 20 well Till here, you know, everyone is okay, but after that, there's a huge problem that comes, which is why uh, we have to see patterns, right? So we have to observe patterns here, what actually is happening. So if you see the coefficients of, uh, if you see the coefficients of the, uh, of the variables here, you can see this is one here and this is one here. You can see this is one, this is two, and this is one. So I'm just going to write the coefficients here. You had 11. And then you had 121, and then you had 1, 3, 3, and 1. So then you had 1, 3, 3, and 1. So what does this become? You know, how is this becoming a pattern? Now, this is nothing but known as a Pascal's triangle, right? So this is something which is known as the Pascal's triangle, in which each term increases by the power of 11, right? So this is nothing but 11 raised to power 1. This is nothing but 11 raised to power 2. This is nothing but 11 raised to power 3. Well, there's another way for you to calculate that. If I write 3, if I write 1, 1 to both of the sides, I can say 3 plus 1 is 4, 3 plus 3 is 6, 3 plus 1 is 4, and then you have 1 on the either sides. So that would be 11 raised to power 4. Then let's suppose if I have uh, 1 and 1 on the either side, 4 plus 1 is 5, 4 plus 6 is 10, 4 plus 6 is 10 and you have 4 plus 1 is 5. So now this will not be equal to 11 raised to power 5 but these would be the coefficients of all the a's and b's uh, in a particular pattern which we're going to do now. Uh, this will not be 11 raised to power 5. So this is how you keep on improving your Pascal triangle. You know this is term 1, term 2, term 3, term 4, term 5. Right. So this is the terms that a plus b raised to power 5 is going to have. But you know what? This is a very tedious process. But let's let's go ahead and you know try to understand how to use this Pascal triangle to your advantage. Now let's suppose you want to find a plus b raised to the power two. Now I know that you already know what is a plus b raised to power two. Now if I talk from Pascal triangle point of view, this two is going to give me the coefficients as one, two, and one. Now what you gotta do is there are always two terms in a binomial theorem here. You're going to say 1 into a raised to the power 2, the maximum power, into b raised to the power 0. So what you're going to do is, you're going to start from the maximum power for a and the minimum power for b. Then slowly and slowly, you're going to decrease the power of a and increase the power of b. So you can say from 2, you will be writing a raised to the power 1 into b raised to the power 1. Now what happened here? From 2, I decreased this 2 to 1. And from 0, I decrease this 0 to 1. Now what I got to do is, again, I will have to decrease, sorry, I increase this b to 1. Now what do I have to do is, I have to decrease this a again. So this is going to go to 0. And I have to increase this b, which is going to go to 2. So from here, I'll get the value as a square plus 2ab plus b square, which is actually the expression for a plus b whole square. Now don't worry, you don't have to actually start from, from A all the time. You can even start with B as well. You can say 1, 2 and 1. You can clearly see that from the middle term, the Pascal terms are always symmetric. So even if you see 1, 3, 3, 1, from the middle, the Pascal terms are always symmetric. So even if you start with B or even if you start with A, it's not going to matter. 
So I'm going to say 1 into uh, a raised to the power 0 and b raised to the power 2 plus 2 into a raised to the power 1 into b raised to the power 1 plus 1 into a raised to the power 2 and b raised to the power 0. That is also going to give you the same expression that is b square plus 2ab plus a square. Right. So I hope everyone understands that anything raised to the power 0 is equal to 1. Right, so that is something that uh, you know we are applying over here. Right, so suppose you're understanding over here. You know, let's try to find some tedious uh, example here. Let's try to see some tedious example. Let's suppose if I want to do two x plus three y raised to the power five. Right, so I want to do two x plus three y raised to the power five, and I want to use the Pascal triangle. Right, so right now we're in the initial stages, so you want to use the Pascal triangle. If I use the Pascal triangle and I want to find the fifth term, so the first term is going to be 11, the second term is going to be 121, the third term is going to be 1331, the fourth term is going to be 1, 3 plus 1, 4, 3 plus 3, 6, 3 plus 1, 4, and a 1 again. And the last term, which is the fifth term which we want, is going to be 5, 10, 10, 5, and 1. So what I'm going to have here is I'm going to be writing 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, and 1. And I'm going to start with, let's suppose this one. So this raised to the power 5 into 3y raised to the power 0 plus, so you have to always have to add these cases, 2x raised to the power 4 into 3y raised to the power 1 plus, Remember, the sum of two terms will always have to be equal to this, right? Plus 10 into 2x raised to the power 3 into 3y raised to the power 2. Plus 10 into 2x raised to the power 2 into 3y raised to the power 3. Plus 5 into 2x raised to the power 1 into 3y raised to the power 4. Plus 1 into 2x raised to the power 0 into 3y raised to the power 5. So now what I got to do is I just got to solve it, which you know I'm going to refrain from doing here just to save some time for us. So this would be the expansion for 2x plus 3y raised to the power 5, right? So you know I suppose you're understanding what I'm trying to do here. Uh, what you have to do is first you write down the coefficient. So I'm just writing down the steps here. It's very important to break things down. First, you write down the coefficients, right? Uh, and how do you find the coefficients? By the Pascal triangle. Remember, you don't have to cram up the Pascal triangle. It's easily derivable. Uh, you can start from 11, then 121, then 1331. Uh, then you just have to add these terms, or you can even start adding the terms from here itself. And the next thing you got to do is the first term that you have, you're going to start from the maximum possible value. And the second term that you're going to have, you're going to start from zero. And gradually you're going to decrease this value by 1 and increase this value by 1 till you make this as 0 and you make this as the maximum possible value. So suppose everyone is trying to understand what I'm, I'm, I'm saying here, right? Uh, now let's try to generalize our findings here. You know, whatever we have found here, let's try to generalize this and try to make it a little bit more uh, constructive and simple. Now let's suppose if someone asks me that what is the expansion for a plus b raised to the power n. Now how do I generalize that? Well let me just start from a simple example. Let me start from a plus b raised to the power 2 again. So my coefficients were 1, 2 and 1. Now there is a way I can write this 1, write this 2 and write this 1 in terms of 2. That would be written as nc1, this would be written as nc2. And this can be written, sorry, this can be written as 2c1, this can be written as uh, 2c2, and uh, this over here, okay, I'm sorry, this is just a little mistake here. This will start as 2c0, this would be starting as 2c1, and this would be starting as 2c3, sorry, 2c2. Now, what is 2c0? Now, if I give you from expression point of view, ncr is going to be equal to n factorial divided by r factorial into n minus r factorial. So 2c0 
is going to be equal to 2 factorial divided by 0 factorial into 2 minus 0 factorial, which is going to be equal to 2 divided by, understand 0 factorial is always equal to 1, it's not equal to 0, divided by 2 factorial, which is equal to 2 again, this and this cancels out, that actually gives me 1, and this 1 is equal to this 1. Similarly, if I calculate 2c1, this is going to be equal to 2. If I calculate 2c2, that is going to be equal to 1. But there is a better way of solving this c over here. If I want to calculate 2c0, 2c0 is going to be equal to, uh, so, uh, let's suppose if I want to calculate 2c1. 2c1 is going to be equal to, so 2 divided by 1. Let's suppose if I want to calculate 5c3. So what you do is, 3 is here, you make 3 slots, right? And you write 5 into 4 into 3, and you write 1 into 2 into 3. That will give you the value of 5c3. Now why does that happen? That happens because when I cut this n minus r factorial into n, you have n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 all the way till n minus r plus 1. Yeah. So I'm just going to show this in mean, on a cleaner page here. Uh, if I talk about n c r, you know, if that's equal to n factorial over r factorial into n minus r factorial. So if I cut this up, this is going to be n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 all the way till r terms. Right? It's going to be pretty straightforward here. It's going to be till r term. So if I talk about 10 c3, so you're going to have three terms going backward from 10 and all the way divided by 3 factorial. Let's suppose you want to calculate 5 c2, that is going to be 5, 4, 2 terms backward divided by 1 into 2. Let's suppose you want to calculate uh, 8 c5, it's going to be 8, 5 terms backward, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? So understand the symmetry at the bottom is equivalent to the symmetry at the top, fine? Uh, one more thing that I would want you to understand is that as you can see that the terms in the Pascal triangle, they are symmetric. As you can see that the terms in the Pascal triangles are symmetric, like 121, 1, 3, 3, 1, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Similarly, the values from nc1 all the way till ncn is also going to be symmetric. So if I say, let's suppose I want to start from uh, 10c1 uh, all the way 10c2 and 10c3 all the way till 10c10. Now this value is going to be equal to this value. This value is going to be equal to 10c9. This value is going to be equal to 10c7, right? Uh, so that is, this is going to be 10c8, I'm sorry, right? Uh, this is going to be 10c0 and 10c1. This is going to be equal to 10c9. So suppose you're understanding what I'm trying to say here. In formula point of view, I want to say that ncr is actually equal to ncn minus r. So 10c3 is actually equal to 10c7. Fine. So I suppose you're understanding this point over here. Right. So now, if I want to have my term, let's suppose if I want to have a plus b raised to the power 2. So then I'm going to have 2c0 into a to the power maximum and b to the power minimum plus 2c1. Now this is going to increase into a to the power 1 into b to the power 1 plus 2c2 into a to the power 0 and b to the power 2. Right. So now what we can do is we can actually generalize this in terms of a plus b raised to the power n as well. Now what is a plus b raised to the power n? So I'm going to start with nc0. You know, I'm going to start with nc0. I'm going to have the maximum possible power for a and the minimum possible power for b. And the next term is going to be equal to nc1. That is going to have the next lowest power for a and the next bigger power for b. Then I'm going to have nc2 into next lower power for a and next greater power for b. And this thing is going to keep on going on 
till I reach n c n and till I make this zero and till I make this maximum. So I hope you're understanding this point over here. What we're trying to do is we're going to go from maximum. So this is going to say an n c zero a to the power max and b to the power min all the way up to n c n a to the power min and b to the power max. So this is what we're trying to do here, right? So again, you uh, I suppose you're understanding that all the binomial terms and all its coefficients are symmetric with respect to the middle point, right? So I suppose you're understanding this point over here. Uh, let's just take a simple example. You know, let's try to you know open things up here. Let's suppose if I want to calculate x plus two raised to the power six. So how will I do that? Well, that is going to be 6c0 into x to the power 6 into 2 to the power 0 plus 6c1 into x to the power 5 into 2 to the power 1. It's very important to keep yourself organized in your scratch paper here. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm writing it in a tabular form here. Plus 6c2 into x to the power 4 and 2 to the power 2. So, what I can do is I can say 6c3, 6c4, 6c5 and I'm going to run out of space here, 6c6. Then x to the power 3, x to the power 2, x to the power 1, x to the power 0, 2 to the power 3, 2 to the power 4, 2 to the power 5, and 2 to the power 6. So if I try to calculate the coefficients, now 6c0 is going to be 6 uh, all the way till, uh, you know, 6c0 is always, anything c0 is always equal to 1, guys, right? Because even if you use the expression, it's always going to be equal to 1. So if this is 1, even the last term is going to be 1. Because as I said, this and this are symmetric to each, with each other. 1 into x to the power 6 into 1. Because 2 to the power 0 is equal to 1. This is 1 into x to the power 0. That is 1 into 2 to the power 6. That is what we're going to have. Then from here, 6c1 is going to be 6 into x to the power 5 into 2 to the power 1. Similarly, this is also equal to 6. Uh, as we know that 6c5, uh, 6c5 is equal to 6c1. ncr is equal to ncn minus r into x to the power 1 into 2 to the power 5. So I'm just going to calculate the coefficients here. Uh, 6c2 is going to have how many slots? 2 slots. Then you're going to have 6, 5, 1 and 2. Similarly, 6c3 is going to have 3 slots. You're going to have 6, 5, 4 and 1, 2, 3. And uh, actually, you don't need to calculate 6c4 because that is actually equal to 6c2. Or even if you want to calculate 6c4 using the slots, you're going to have 4 slots, 6, 5, 4, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, and you can eventually see that these 3, 4 and these 3, 4 cut out, and this is actually equal to 6, C2. So, let's try to find, uh, you know, let's try to generalize it even more. So, let's suppose this over here is your binomial theorem, you know, all cracks in a single line, that a plus b raised to the power n is equal to summation of k equal to 0 till k equal to n from n c k a raised to the power n minus k into b raised to the power k. So what is happening here? Uh, you're starting from n c 0 and you're saying a raised to the power k into b raised to the power a raised to the power n into b raised to the power 0. So at this term, your k is equal to 0. And the next term is k is equal to 1. Then it's n c 1 into a raised to the power n minus 1 into b raised to the power 1 and that is how it goes on. So you can clearly see each term kind of satisfies with this equation over here. Fine. So I suppose you are understanding this video over here. Uh, thanks very much for watching. This was about the basic of binomial theorem. We are going to move on to some tougher problems and some uh, properties of binomial theorem. So I suppose you are understanding this. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one.